be honest, my life felt like it started when I got medicated. And that was only in 2022. Before that, I could not be the person that I wanted to be because I was putting so much energy into just trying to be okay every day. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. I wanted to talk about everything that has happened in the last three, two to three years um, since I started posting on social media because if you guys have been following me since back then, if any of you guys have, um, you'll know that there's a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Some of it I've posted about, some of it I haven't posted about, some of it I've posted about very vaguely sometimes. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to explain everything that's happened, my journey so far, how I got to this place. Um, and yeah, hopefully this video won't be too long. I'm going to try and there's a lot to cover. I'm going to try and do it as bless you succinctly as possible, but feel free to like put this down and like go about your day and just use this as like a podcast episode rather than like watching me because it's just gonna be me talking and that's like boring as hell. Anyway, um, let's get into it. So back in 2022, I midway through 2022, I was first diagnosed with bipolar disorder after having symptoms from the age of 14. So what's that like 10 years? Hang on, Gremlin wants to come in now. Hey bro, come join the video. So we got Charlie in here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Charlie and Chubby's down on the floor and then Gremlin is here. This is Gremlin's basket. So I'm gonna put this here. Oh, get off the fucking screens. Gremlin, why do you do this? So he never climbs screens, right, ever. But every single time I am trying to film a video of some sort, he just walks up and just climbs with the screen and just hangs out. I'm not getting you down this time. You can just jump. What are you even doing? Come. Ugh. And then he has to get me to get him down. I swear it's just like attention. All right, in your basket. This is usually the time that he'll be sleeping, so. You'll probably fall asleep soon. Hey, you are like just having a giant baby. Anyway, oh now Charlie wants to go out. Okay, hang on. Bye. He doesn't really like Gremlin. He gets worried because sometimes Gremlin like does like crazy playing on his bed. Like he'll run around like crazy and like throw himself off the edge and stuff. And it makes Charlie uncomfortable. So whenever we're in here, Charlie's like, uh, nah, I'm out bro. Which is totally fine. So, right, back to, back to what I was talking about. Mid-2022, got diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, so I bipolar type two, which is mostly mixed episodes. So you get like kind of like hypomania and depression together and it just creates this like horrible, like anxiety, depression type situation. Um, and then I would also just get like really bad depressions, but like not, like I wasn't sad, I would just, it'd be like my brain was like operating in like low power. Like uh, I just would sleep all the time. Like it was kind of like I was sick, but I wasn't actually sick. Like there was nothing medically wrong with me. And that's why it took me so long to get my diagnosis. Like it does when you have bipolar, it's because the symptoms can be, can look like so many different things. And to me, it for me, the symptoms seemed like physical. It was a very physical um, and the sure, like the, the mental, aspect was there as well but because the mental aspect started when I was 14 and they would go for like years I would be depressed for years like I would just assume that I was just who I was like it was just like my personality um but actually in reality I was just horribly depressed and just trying to cope with life so anyway get diagnosed go on meds not realizing that the meds actually made me hypermanic but um for the one of the very first times like so a very few times in my life I've had like more pure hypermania where it's like euphoric hypomania, like happy hypomania and not horrible anxiety hypomania. Um, so <laughs> didn't realize at the time, but then got medicated and I was like, you know what? I wasn't, I was not happy where I was. I was very unhappy with my life. I just kicked out my boyfriend um, on Christmas Eve because he was an alcoholic, couldn't hold down a job. And then he cheated on me with a guy. I know a lot to unpack there. 
So I kicked him out. I was working as a vet nurse, uh, well, a vet tech full time, uh, barely making ends meet because, as you know, vet, well, if you probably don't know, but if you do know, so vet techs, um, vet nurses, and even vets, we get paid pretty badly. So I was really struggling to like live with the cost of living crisis, and I decided that the solution to that was to put everything in storage and move into my car with all of my animals. So I have Bubba, who's a bird. Gremlin, my cat, um, and Chubby. So Charlie isn't actually my dog, so I had Chubby. And I was like, I'm gonna move into my car. Uh, obviously, no one could tell me that I that I shouldn't do this. No one could tell me differently. I was set on doing this. Uh, the reason I know that it was hypermania was because I also went on a holiday during this time, which I could not afford, and I also maxed out my credit card. <laughs> so putting all those things together, I was like, oh, now I look back, I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. But at the time, you don't know. You, like, you don't know that you're in it and you're just like, no one can fucking tell you anything. You know, they can't tell, talk you out of it because you just think that they just don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they did, but anyway. I don't regret it at all because it took me, it's brought me to this place, but yeah, it's been a journey. So moving to my car, uh, for some reason that year, it was so wet. Like we had so many, like we had a flood. So I live in Brisbane. Brisbane flooded, um, it is, Brisbane is built on a flood bank, bank, so it does happen quite often, but like we get these really, really intense like rain episodes every couple of years and it just floods everything. So it's a, pretty much rained like nonstop for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And obviously if you're living in a car, not ideal. And I literally didn't have a tent or anything. Like I just took the seats out of the back of my Astra, my Holden Astra, I had a mattress in the back that I, cause I'm quite tall, I, like, I couldn't even stretch out properly. And then I had my bird and I had chubby and then gremlin luckily i had a friend that could look after gremlin because obviously i was not able to bring my cat along in the car because i had nowhere to live and i could just park my car anywhere and sleep i was like well i just want to always be out with my horse Tarek. so i would st i started um like just parking my car in my friend's driveway because so well my ex-friend now my horse was adjusted at her property um she had like an equestrian facility type thing like she did riding lessons and um yeah like had some adjustment and stuff so my horse was there and I had also lived with this person multiple times and so when she found out she, I was homeless she's like oh you can just park your car here and sleep here so that's what I was doing right so I was sleeping there and in return I was like you know I'll get up I'll help you with the horses because I over the years I'd lived with her probably three times in my life over periods of time um always having to leave because it got really toxic but I always came back as you do in toxic relationships. You know, you can have toxic friendships too. It doesn't, isn't always like a partner. Um, so I was living there, helping her with her horses cause she just had a newborn baby. And then they were, after a couple of weeks of the rain, just being like relentless. They're like, hey, do you, we have like this old gazebo that we don't use. Like, do you want to put it up beside the shed? Like, and then at least you've got a little bit more space. So I was like, oh my God, amazing. So I set up this like little tent area and I was living there, um, but obviously torrential rain, gazebos, and even though I, <laughs> I tried to do everything that I could to like, you know, you put the pool noodles up and you put the side down so that the water runs off and doesn't collapse. I came home one night and it had completely collapsed and all of my stuff was drenched. I had like air fryer in there, like, you know, cause I was living in this tent and it was, it just collapsed. And when a gazebo collapses, it damages the gazebo. It bent it like it was like twisted metal. And I was like, crap. So because again, the rain just kept coming. They had a hay shed. And the reason I was in the shed was because it was disgusting. Like it was just a shed, you know, it's like just full of storage um, that no one really ever goes in there. Like it's just storage. So I was like, hey, do you guys mind if I like set up because at the time too like the mosquitoes the bugs were terrible so i was like i can move into the shed like it's dry my tent won't collapse again but i need to be protected from the mosquitoes so i set up like a big um in, in a gazebo type mosquito net thingy so it was pretty much like what my gazebo was but it was just the inside part and i just like strapped that up to the roof and stuff using rope made this little like thing that i was living in inside this like disgusting shed and i was like uh, I'm not complaining, like I'm happy. Like, I'm just grateful that I have somewhere that I can stay that is near my horse, it's dry, I can have my pets with me, I'm not paying rent. It's great, you know, it's exactly what I wanted. I was trying to get back on my feet financially, I was trying to sort out what I wanted to do with my life, I was trying to sort out my mental health, everything, like it was a lot. 
So I'm getting up, you know, I'm still working in the vet clinic at this point. I'm also um, getting up 5 a.m. every morning to go out and do, so, cause I would do the horses in the morning. So I would bring them all in, feed them all, um, muck out any like yards that need to be mucked out sort of thing. Um, in return, cause I was like, I need to do something cause you guys are letting me stay here. And my friend again, just had just had a newborn baby. So I was like, this is a great situation for both of us. You don't have to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning when you have a newborn and you know, I get somewhere to live, right? So that went on, that was fine. It was fine for a little while as it always is with this person and then it gets toxic. And partly because of her partner as well, um, for some reason he just ended up taking a real dislike to me. So over time it just got, it started getting a lot more hostile. Um, they were fighting all the time because they've got a newborn obviously and their relationship wasn't that great to start with and I was continually getting dragged into the middle of it by her and like for example one time they had a fight in the middle of the night and she took off with the baby and he flipped out and then I was getting I had to get up in the morning and they were she was calling me like you have to go do the horses like because this has happened um, and anyway he's out there and I'm like oh well, good morning and he's incredibly rude to me and I'm like bro I'm out here to help you like I didn't cause this issue you know like really toxic shit like they would be screaming at each other like just really bad um and I then started becoming the target of, of things because this person that I live with um she she had I guess some ego issues with um horsemanship type things and hated that I was doing positive reinforcement as a lot of people do even though I would never talk about what I was doing I would just do my own little thing like over in the corner and I'd just be out there all day from like sun up to sundown just working with Tarek because I just it was my happy place I loved it and I started to get some really cool results and obviously the more results I got using my method that she believed didn't work the worse the hostility got towards me and then it got to a head and I ended up having to leave like pretty much overnight it just got really bad um, and I was like, screw this, this is it, like I need to cut this person off because this is not the first time that it's kind of gotten to that sort of point. And so I went, that's it, like I'm out. And at the time, one of my friends, she messaged me, she was like, hey, I'm gonna apply for a house in Bow Desert. I'm looking for people to move in with. Like I really, you know, we had very similar vibes with like horses and stuff. And she's like, do you want to sign, like get on the lease with me? And I was like, hell yeah. But I did, like, she was really adamant that we were going to get it. And I was like, look, it seems like a pipe dream, but we got it. So I moved back in with a friend for a couple of months while that sort of turnover happened. Moved out into Bow Desert in this horse property. When we got there, the property was just, had gone to shit. Like, it had completely been neglected. So we had to do a lot of work to get it back up to scratch. Like, put a lot of money into it. And so I spent, you know, me and my friend, and we're living with another person, um, but she didn't really pitch in much. We ended up, you know, spent a couple of months over summer, like getting everything good and working and mowed and everything and clean the stables out. Um, so I think this, by this point it was midway through 2023, towards the end of 2023, living in this property. Um, I also started stripping again. So I was stripped all through um, uni, so for a couple of years. And then I took a break off, obviously, with my mental illness and everything. And then I was just... I was just really missing the flexibility and the money. So I went back and I was driving into Brisbane and staying at a friend's house over the weekend. So working on the weekends at the strip club. So I would do 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. and then drive back to Bow Desert on the Monday. Um, Cause we have to do three shifts a week at the strip club minimum and then drive back and work on my horse stuff, fix the property up during the week, which is why I was a little bit like, up and down with my content posting. Like I tried to start a Patreon that didn't end up happening because I just couldn't find the time. Like I was just so busy and I had so many things going on that, and there was actually a lot of stress going on with that house as well. And I just wasn't doing very well mentally. And it just, it just, you know, I just felt like I was slogging so hard and not getting anywhere. But at this point, I still thought that I wanted to teach people about horses. So when I first started my account, so I started my TikTok account in 2022, like when I moved into that tent, when I was in that tent, I just started posting on TikTok. I'd never posted on TikTok before. I'd never really been on social media. No fucking idea what I was doing. Just started posting videos. A lot of them got like quite a lot of views quite quickly, which freaked me out because I was at that point like really not okay with being seen. Like no one ever talks about how hard it is to be seen. And on the internet, everyone can see you and anyone can say anything they want. 
So that was really challenging, trying to figure out how to post content and like what works and what does I just experimented and like, you know, was just sort of trying things um, for that whole sort of point. And I thought like, because I was so passionate about positive reinforcement and like, I thought, you know, a lot of people want to learn about it. Like I want to teach this, but then I realized over time that I actually don't think that I want to teach it in like a teachy way because there's so many amazing positive reinforcement trainers out there that teach it really, really well. And I'm just like, don't think that I'm that good at teaching it. Um, but anyway, when I was in Bow Desert, that was sort of like the plan that I was going for. I was like, you know, I would love to do like online courses, all that sort of thing. But, you know, I think I was only out there for like six months. It was just a whirlwind. And towards the end of that time, so we had another housemate and she had a boyfriend who was like 11 years older than her and had just gone out of jail we had like a child in our house too like my friend Sarah she had a child like a six-year-old and this other friend she was bringing her boyfriend over he had a he had a freaking ankle monitor on because he had curfew because he'd been in jail for armed robbery and then he got charges for selling ice in jail so like it was pretty intense and um he was also coercively controlling her completely but she was so young that she didn't realize like she was like 20 maybe um but i've been through domestic violence before and my friend has also had experience with it so we we could see it from the get-go obviously that got really really heated um the police had to get involved it was the whole thing and trying to juggle everything i was like this is not working for me this environment's not working for me um and after everything that happened i decided the best thing that for me was to move back and i moved in with a family friend and that's where i am now so i moved to the north side of brisbane and I'm living with um, a close friend and it's a, just a much better environment for me, even though I couldn't have my horses here. And so that transition was kind of, it was almost like my world imploded because I thought that everything that I was working towards from like being in the tent and all the stuff that happened, I was like, it's all because I want to do this stuff with my horses. But then I moved here and I was like, I'm no longer living with my horses. It felt like I'd gone back. It felt like I went backwards instead of forwards because now here I was, I wasn't living with my horses. I wasn't able to access them as much. I was having to work more because they were keeping them was more expensive because I was paying for adjustment up on the north side. And I kind of had a bit of a moment where I was like, I just need to step back a bit and I just need to like focus on myself and like start just because to be honest, my life felt like it started when I got medicated. And that was only in 2022. Before that, I could not be the person that I wanted to be because I was putting so much energy into just trying to be okay every day. Oh, man, that's actually bringing some stuff up for me. Um, so learning to like who I was as a person and kind of reconnecting with who I was before my symptoms started. So when I was younger, so like say 13, 12, um, that was has sort of been where I've been at the last couple of months, last six months or so, or to the year, what, what are we now? Oh yeah, we're almost at the end of 2024. So since I moved here, so end of 2023 to now, it's just been a journey of just building confidence in myself, learning to be seen, trying to figure out what I want from my life um, and where I want to take my content. And what I realized at that time is I have a very interesting life and I just don't really realize that. <laughs> um, hold up, I need to stop these bloody tears from coming down. This is just what I do, like you should see me in therapy. I literally just talk and I just cry the entire time. <laughs> it's like really embarrassing, but it is what it is. It's healthy to cry. It's not very really good when you're wearing makeup. Okay, I have this sock. I know that's disgusting, but whatever. It's clean. Yeah, it's clean. All right. Let me just check that my face is still. Oh, yeah, it's fine. All right. Back to it. Hey, baby. I know mommy's a bit upset, but it's okay. Because I get to live here with you now. Ow! So moving up here, I was better away from my horses, but then I started thinking, well, I have a very interesting life. 
you know, I'm a stripper. Not a lot of people know, know a lot about strippers and they, a lot of people find that very interesting. All of my animals have amazing personalities. Like they're all really smart. And I was like, why don't I, ow, gremlin, stop it. Start making content about just everything about me. Like not just the horses, but also, you know, showcasing all of my animals' personalities, my life with them, you know, talking about, cause as an equestrian, like one of the biggest things that I've had to like deal with and work through is, you know, everyone gets imposter syndrome, but imagine getting imposter syndrome when you never grew up with horses, you got your first horse at 18, I mean, at um, 23, you train completely differently to everyone else. And now I'm posting that on the internet for anyone to say anything about. Like, that is terrifying. Like, that is so scary. And that's one of the biggest things that I've had to sort of, like, learn to be okay with. And I'm so grateful that my social media channel has, like, sort of evolved and grown as, like, at the pace that it has. Because it's the exact pace that I needed to, like, learn to, like, be okay with being seen and showing up in the world and being secure in myself and that yeah maybe the way that I've come into horses and the way that I've come into training has been very like different to what most people in the industry are like but that's also something that is very unique and that can also show people other people that may be in the same situation that I am they didn't get raised with horses they didn't go showing when they were younger they haven't been riding since they were two but that you can still make a difference and you can still be really good at something even though the way you got there is very off the main path. And being a vet tech too, I was like, I've got a lot of knowledge, like I've got a degree in animals essentially. So I'm like, I can grab all of these things, I can use all of these things and put it into my content. And and then I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I wanna do. I think that's what I wanna do and just see where it goes. So, yeah, that is, I don't know, I feel like I've been rambling for a while, but I think that is what the last couple of years have been, the journey to this point, to come to this conclusion, to be like, yes, this is, this is what I want to do. I want to make content professionally. I don't want to focus on just seeing face-to-face -face clients because you're so limited with what you can do with that because you're only limited by how many hours you have of yourself to give. Whereas if I do content like this, if I do um, stuff on the internet, then that I could help someone from over in like Europe or like Canada or something. I think that's why I'm way more drawn to like the online space because I just think that I can help more horses, more people and bring more people entertainment, joy and all those good things more on the internet than I can like face to face. Um, because that is kind of like what half of my other job is for three days a week or well three nights a week I'm entertaining I'm an entertainer and I also train animals and I'm also a vet tech and I'm also have a mental illness like I, I'm a multifaceted person and I want that to start kind of being showcased in my content um, but again like it's all about learning to be seen learning how to make content how to communicate with you guys and I think now I'm at the point where I can just hit hard. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. So I think that's it for now. I'm going to stop rambling. I have no idea how long I've been talking for. I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you for listening slash watching. Uh, if you can like, comment, share any of my videos, subscribe, whatever. It really helps like boost the algorithm for the YouTube channel because obviously um, it's a new channel. So you guys could do that. It would make such a difference to me and like really help me out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.